analgesic system. This analgesic system starts from the midbrain, peri equiductal gray matter. Peri equiductal gray matter. Okay. Peri equiductal gray matter. From peri equiductal gray matter, the neuron going downside into medulla. In medulla, we having rafe magnus nucleus. Rafe magnus. Rafe magnus. Then this from the rafe magnus nucleus, second neuron going downside to spinal cord. And third neuron inside the spinal cord, we have another neuron, a three neuron here. Okay. Neuron number one, two, and three. So it's a pain controlling system. For example, if you're having injury wound on the hand or skin, the pain signal going inside the spinal cord. Which track are you using? Spinothalamic track. Spinothalamic track. So this pain controlling system inhibit this pain. Understand? Pain controlling system inhibit this pain. We're using neuron number one. This neuron number one, neuron number one using neurotransmitter in kappa -lin. In kappa -lin. Clear? In kappa -lin. Endorphin. In kappa -lin. Endorphin. Then neuron number two, neuron number two producing 5-HT. Oh, what is this? Serotonin? SSRI, SNRI also help in pain. That I will explain in when we learn about antidepressant, okay? Serotonin, this serotonin act on spinal cord and stimulate neuron number three, neuron number three again using in careful. It's a full analgesic system, okay? So these neurotransmitters, they're using receptor mu, most common neuroreceptor. There are three, neuro, three receptors. These neurotransmitters using receptor mu, kappa, mu, kappa, clear or not, another lambda, mu, kappa, and lambda. This mu and kappa we commonly use in opioid system, okay? These are inhibitory receptors. These are inhibitory receptor so what are the opiates these opiates so what uh, internal opiate in caffeine and endorphin these are internal opiates they control your pain okay the opiate we use from outside what they're doing help analgesic system okay so these opiate we use from outside the common opiate, biggest thing is to know about morphine. Morphine. Heroin. Okay. You also use as drug. There are many, many names there. Okay. Oxycodone, codeine. There are many names. There. So we learn in opiate. So these opiate, how are they working? They they're using the mu and kappa receptor. Okay. Mu and kappa receptor. They stimulate these receptors. They stimulate these receptor they help to help like the working they stimulate these receptor and helping analgesic system. okay they excite our energetic system they make strong and strong our energetic system then the pain automatically is not going to bring okay pain pain stimulus is suppressed totally suppressed it's not going to sensory cortex and patient not feeling pain understand these are the opiate how they work it. The basic idea is clear. So what type of drug and what group of drug and how they're working for the central nervous system. Okay. Quickly revise. For an anxiety, the problem. For anxiety. Where's the problem in the frontal lobe, the excessive stimulation. Patient not able to think well, not able to plan well. Yeah. That's the issue, patient. Worry. The anxious patient. So we need to stop this excitation by using GABA drugs. By using drugs, stimulate GABA, okay? GABA related drugs. Anti anxiety drugs, GABA related drugs. How about the psychotic drugs? 
psychosis the problem inside the temporal lobe and the temporal lobe hippocampus part okay in hypothalamus but the issue here increase dopamine and decrease serotonin so how is drug working for psychosis the stop action of dopamine and increase action of serotonin understand stop action of dopamine and increase activity of serotonin so they were the antipsychotic drug they divide into two groups typical antipsychotic atypical antipsychotic typical antipsychotic working against the dopamine atypical antipsychotic stimulating serotonin increasing serotonin clear typical we use for acute psychosis atypical we use for chronic in epilepsy uh, what the problem excessive electrical stimulation all over the cortex all over the cortex excessive stimulation we using sodium blocker calcium blocker and the gaba related drug to treat epilepsy the next depression what the problem in depression inside the inside the brain stem decrease norepinephrine and decrease serotonin so we using drug to increase serotonin to increase norepinephrine inside the brain stem okay so we can treat depression opposite to depression another condition mania is opposite to depression if patient having both thing sometime mood depressed sometime mood mania mean excited yeah if having both issue by polar disorder by polar disorder okay having many also having <coughs> depre depressive episode also <coughs> what's the next parkinson disease what's the problem in parkinson disease the problem in parkinson disease in decrease dopamine increase acetyl where <coughs> inside basal ganglia inside basal ganglia clear the problem inside the midbrain dopamine neuron damage it lead to decrease dopamine how we treat parkinson disease increasing dopamine and decreasing acetyl In Alzheimer disease, what's the problem? In Alzheimer disease, inside the frontal frontal lobe and inside temporal lobe, decrease acetyl choline. So we can increase acetyl choline and treat Alzheimer disease. Okay. So what are the opioid? How they working? They support analgesic system. Okay. They help. How they control pain? Analgesic system already exists inside the brain, inside the central nervous system. Okay, analgesic system start from mid brain uh, till spinal cord. Control pain stimulus not allowed to enter inside the brain. Then person not feeling pain. So and naturally pain control system inside the brain. Okay, so opiate, heroin and morphine. What they doing? They support. They stimulate this analgesic system and then they controlling pain. Okay. Understand? So let's start the first group. The first we start from according to sequence in your book, neurodegenerative diseases. First there, Parkinson disease. And Alzheimer's disease. The first we discuss Parkinson disease. In Parkinson disease. Parkinson disease may be primary. Parkinson disease may be secondary. Okay. Parkinson disease primary mostly primary. Parkinson disease primary have no reason only only because of aging, just destruction of neuron. What's the problem? Destruction of neuron. Where? In inside mid brain what neuron damage dopamine neuron damage yeah so dopamine decrease 
So have no cause. That's the primary Parkinson disease. Secondary Parkinson disease, for example, if patient, like in case of farming patient using phosphates, organophosphate, yeah? Organophosphate like spray, fertilizers, pesticide, insecticides. The farm in farming we use this, yeah? Insecticide and pesticides. So in farming. Uh, chronic exposure, it's not just acute poisoning, chronic exposure, this uh, organophosphate enter to brain, organophosphate damage midbrain. Okay. Secondary having cause, one cause, organophosphate. Damage midbrain. Which nucleus? Substantia nigra. Organophosphate. Second, another cause, drug and use. Which group of drug lead to Parkinsonism? Just now we done. Anti psychotics. Parkinsonism. Okay. Drug and use. Till it clear? Drug and use. How patient present with the Parkinson disease? The patient having rigidity, all body muscles. Rigid. Okay. Rigidity. Pause. The rigidity, two type rigidity, lead pipe. No, lead pipe is very hard pipe. Lead pipe. You can't flex the patient arm easily, elbow joint. It's very hard, very stiff. Cog wheel rigidity. Cog wheel. Cog wheel like this. The wheel having in that like uh, in engine in, in different machinery we use this cog wheel. Yeah. The cog wheel rigidity. The patient doing jerking. It's not, it's also a type of rigidity, okay? The two category, one coke wheel, one lead pipe wheel. Second thing, tremors, tremors at rest, resting tremor, okay? Resting tremor, All, always shaking hand, always shaking legs, the most elder person doing, okay? Next, Hypokinesia, moving very slowly. Hypokinesia. Next. The facial muscle, also rigid mask fit. It's same like the face, the person wearing mask. If person wearing mask and crying or happy and laughing, can you see? Of course not. Not this expression because person already, already wearing mask. Mask face, expressionless face. So these are the main clinical features of Parkinson's disease. Okay, it may be primary, it may be secondary. If have no cause, then primary. Otherwise, secondary. Okay. So how you treat this disease? Parkinson disease. So what are the drugs used for Parkinson disease? Number one, levodopa. Number two, let's try the list here, carbidopa. Number three, COMT inhibitor. Number four, monoamine oxidase, DRA, which one? Which one? DRA, B, A part. Depression, antidepressant, okay. Monomine oxidase inhibitor type B. 
नंबर सिक्स डोपामीन एगोनिस्ट डोपामीन रिसेप्टर रिसेप्टर एगोनिस्ट ओके डोपामीन रिसेप्टर एगोनिस्ट द टू कैटेगरी आर गोड एंड नॉन आर गोड अरगोड एंड नॉन अरगोड ओके इन अरगोड डेरिवेटिव गोड डेरिवेटिव द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ड्रग क्रोमोक्रिप्टिन एग्जामिनर आप मेनी मेनी पॉइंट वेर वी यूज ब्रोमोक्रिप्टिन मेनी एम सी क्यू ब्रोमोक्रिप्टिन ब्रोमोक्रिप्टिन कैबर गोलिन कैबर गोलिन ब्रोमोक्रिप्टिन नॉन अरगोल्ड प्रेमी पिक्सोल प्रेमी पिक्सोल एपोमार्फिन एपोमार्फिन नॉट मिक्स विद मार्फिन ओके समथिंग डिफरेंट एपोमार्फिन नॉट थिंक इट अबाउट ओपी एड ओके एपोमार्फिन रोटीगोटीन रोटीगोटीन So these are the non-argold derivatives. Okay, let me explain different from argold and non-argold. Bromocriptine, capergolin, bromocriptine, capergolin, premifixol, apomorphine, rotigotine. These are the dopamine receptor agonist. Okay, argold derivative very strong agonist. Non-argold derivative weak agonist. Okay, argold derivative very strong. नॉन अरगोल्ड आर वी ग्रुप नंबर सेवन एंटी मस्कुरेनिक एंटी विच एंटी मस्कुरेनिक बेन्जोट्रोपेन ट्राई हेक्सोफेनिडेल Try hexofenidyl. Another anti. Actually, this drug was anti anti viral, but also used for Parkinson's disease. Amenta D. Amenta D. It's a, actually it's a anti viral. Okay. Anti viral for influenza, uh, but also used in. parkinson's drug list clear okay now we revise levodopa parbidopa cumt inhibitor mo inhibitor dopamine receptor agonist anti muscarinic okay so what these drug doing levodopa carbidopa cumt monoamine oxidase listen here carefully okay so these drug what is levodopa levodopa is a real dopamine okay levodopa is dopamine so you give can you use dopamine directly now cumt form cumt catecholamine never use orally because catecholamine not able to cross brain blood brain barrier they not allowed to pass to brain okay epinephrine not allowed to pass to brain now epinephrine can't enter brain yeah so levodopa levodopa is actually dopamine is inhibited inside l dopa you remember that's levodopa synthetic form here levodopa levodopa carbidopa these drug doing what they increasing dopamine understand they increasing dopamine they increasing dopamine so what are these drug doing then they attach with dopamine receptor okay they attach with dopamine receptor and work like dopamine these drug attach with receptor and work like dopamine attach with receptor and work like understand so these drug occupy the receptor of dopamine and stimulate the receptor these are the dopamine receptor agonist 
how about this group one to four they increase dopamine they increasing dopamine directly understand they increasing dopamine directly and how about the, the other drug dopamine receptor agonist they stimulate the receptor of dopamine they using the receptor okay so these drugs this you already know cumt enzyme cumt enzyme for breakdown of dopamine okay MAO enzyme for breakdown of dopamine. This drug also increases dopamine. This drug also increases dopamine. All these drugs they help to increase dopamine. Understand? So all these drugs they help to increase dopamine. Clear, clear. All these drugs they help to increase dopamine inside the brain. Yeah. Okay. Next, these drugs what they're doing? They stimulate the dopamine receptor. They stimulate dopamine receptor. They act like they work like dopamine. They work like dopamine. And the last group, anti-muscunenic. Oh, anti-muscunenic, you, you already know in Parkinson's disease. What the problem? In Parkinson's disease, how you can treat? What are your principle of treatment? You need to increase dopamine activity and decrease acetylcholine activity. Understand? For this purpose, using anti-muscunenic, benzotropin, trihexophenidyl, amantadine. Okay? To increase dopamine, first you try to increase dopamine directly by using dopamine, okay? Using dopamine in the form of levodopa. And you stabilize the dopamine, inhibit the enzyme for breakdown of dopamine, CUMT inhibitor and MAO inhibitor, okay? Clear or not, okay? So you increasing dopamine. Another option, another option, you can directly go for stimulation of dopamine receptor. You directly go for dopamine stimul uh, stimulating receptor, dopamine receptor, agonist, weak agonist, strong agonist, ergot, ergot, and non ergot. Ergot, bromocaptin, and capergolin, and non ergot, apomorphine, primifixol, and rotigotin. Understand the mechanism of action of these drugs done, how they're working for Parkinson's disease. Okay, what, what are you thinking about the side effects? So if they increase dopamine in, in if they increase dopamine when dopamine enter your blood, what they causing with the dopamine receptor? Dopamine D1, D2, D2 on renal vessel, you should know. In shock patient, we use dopamine, yeah? Hypovolemic shock, we use dopamine. Phenol dopamine and dopamine we use for hypovolemic shock, hemorrhagic shock. So dopamine causing what? Dopamine attached with the renal vessel and causing excessive urine production. They're increasing dopamine in the peripheral system. What they're causing? Causing hypotension. Decreased blood pressure. Decreased blood pressure. Why? Because D2 present on renal vessel causing vasodilation, more GFR, more urine production. More, more urine production. Okay? Because they're increasing dopamine. They increase dopamine in inside the limbic system causing psychosis. They increase dopamine. Which neurotransmitter you use in vomiting center? Let me know. If you remember, dopamine. So if you increase dopamine in the vomiting center, patients start vomiting. Vomiting, psychosis, hypotension. These three common side effects of these drugs. Understand? Hypotension, psychosis, vomiting. Hypotension, psychosis, vomiting dopamine also inhibit prolactin if you remember endocrine allergy dopamine inside the brain is a prolactin inhibitory hormone remember endocrine allergy prolactin inhibitory hormone was dopamine if you inhibit dopamine dopamine decrease prolactin level if you increase dopamine then prolactin decrease decrease another side effect decrease prolactin in female, decrease for leptin, okay? Decrease. Like if the if the mother mother on feeding stage, now feeding the baby and having some Parkinson's disease like symptom, okay? So no need to use this drug. It can stop for leptin. It's not good for that mother now. That mother, the breastfeed, the feeding mother need need prolactin for milk production, okay? So uh, it's effect on prolactin. These four side effects clear? Anti Parkinson's disease drugs, what they're doing with the other system, they're producing psychosis, they decrease blood pressure by excessive renal diuresis, and they also producing nausea vomiting because high dopamine inside the brain stem. Okay. All right.
salbutyl class the remaining uh, side how these drugs the mechanism action one by one we will discuss tomorrow inshallah try to focus on all the pictures of brain okay depression then you easily can understand how these drugs are working okay okay so it's very informative lecture today lecture is very very important to understand full scene of pharmacology is a summary okay see you inshallah okay thank you sir welcome allah hafiz assalam alaikum Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum teman-teman. Kayak mau menangis loh aku di pelajaran. Ya ampun kayak sudah lano ya. Kok pusing ya? Eh kok diulang-ulang. Kenapa ini? Maksudnya Ya, ingat semua anatominya. Itu kayak kita tuh sudah dijelasin dari zaman dulu gitu kan. Setiap pelajaran itu dijelasin lagi, dijelasin lagi. Tapi kok kayak masih bingung gitu kayak hmm, apa? Apa lagi ya? Malu. Seren. Anjong. Sampai jumpa guys, good luck.